Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for coming today. This uh, session will be a combination of a PowerPoint presentation with live demos. So what we're looking at, of course, is phrase and proximity searching um, when you're using FST on the Ovid plot platform. Um, so I will dive in here. So there's some rules which you may or may not know, depending on how familiar you are with the Ovid platform. But the first thing that you should know, I think, with phrase searching is that actually phrase searching is the default way that Ovid will interpret words that you type next to each other in a search box. So we think often of phrase searching as having to be inside quotation marks and on Ovid, it doesn't. So typing shelf life with no quotation marks will bring back the exact same number of results that typing shelf life inside quotation marks would bring back. So it's something that you need to be aware of if you weren't already. Now, another thing that's quite useful to know is that Ovid is picky about the kind of quotation marks that you use. So it does not like curved quotation marks. It has to be straight ones. So if you're typing in the platform itself, then it will by default be with the straight quotation marks. But if you're copying something from a Word document or perhaps from a PDF that you wanna search on, it might have the, the curved ones and then you'll get an error message. So that's just something that I want to bring to your attention. So the exception of when you need to use the quotation marks for a phrase is if your phrase contains what are called reserve words. Um, so reserve words are basically the operators that the platform uses for other functions. So they're the words and or not, and also ADJ, so adjacent, add, sub, scope, and use. So if your phrase happens to have any of those words inside of it, then it will read it as the operator before it reads it as a word. So this means that you could just use the quotation marks by habit, or you can get to know that list. Or if you're getting a, a really weird result that you're not expecting, then you can remember, oh, that might be a reserve word that I need to watch out for. So I should have said that a phrase search, a phrase is two or more words that you type next to each other that the database reads and matches up with results where those words are typed in the order that you type them next to each other, so with no intervening words between them. So they can either be short, just two words, or you know three or four, or you can sometimes type like a whole title as a phrase. Proximity searching, on the other hand, is when you have two um, words, and it in this case has to be two words, it can't be more than two, that you want to have within a certain distance of each other. And the operator for proximity searching on Ovid is ADJ, so adjacent. And you can just type ADJ between two words and that will do the same thing as a phrase search. So you can remember, you can type the words with nothing. You can type them inside the quote, straight quotes, or you could type the ADJ between them if you wanted to. Um, but then you can start to insert numbers after ADJ, so directly after it, no space. And that starts giving instructions to the database to search for your words within a certain number, up to a certain number of words apart. So if you just have ADJ1, then they have to be right next to each other, but there can be an either order. If you do two, then they, again, can be in either order with up to one word in between. So there might be no words in between, or there can be one in between. Um, and ADJ3 is either order, up to two words in between, So um, and so on, and so on, and so on. So you can go up to 99. Uh, that's the, the limit. 
on the Ovid platform. Um, and these words will always appear in the same field with each other. So they would be in the abstract field together or the title field, um, or they could be subject headings. Um, if you have identical words like face to face or side by side, it won't work. You'd have to actually type those out as a phrase. So you can't do those as adjacent because it won't understand what you're doing or it won't interpret it correctly. So one thing that Ovid doesn't have is another operator, which you can say the words have to stay in the same order, but insert up to a certain number of words in between them. But there's actually a, a device that you can use to force that so, and the way that you force it is to take advantage of the words that are the stop words in Ovid. So every database will have some stop words. So these are words that don't really get counted when, they're, when your, your search is being run. And I think that the main reason that this happens is that it, it keeps this um, processing time fast because there's so many ands, so many those in, in every record that it just ignores those that it can concentrate on the more distinct words. So if we wanna look at how you can force the words to stay in the, the same direction using the um, stop words. So of the, for, from, is, of, that, this, to, was, were, those are all stop words. So you can use these to make your word stay in the right direction. So if we wanted to have mouse and model, but we wanted to make sure that mouse always preceded model within two words of each other, then we could go mouse of the model. And here I am in advanced search. So I don't wanna to go to the thesaurus. I just want to do this as a keyword search and let me search it. And we can see that I'm getting 3000 results. If I were to do it in reverse model of the mouse, then I only get 78 results. Now to show you that these are keeping them in the same direction. So model is always in front of mouse here and mouse is always in front of model on the first search. We can combine these as an ors or search so that we've got them together. And that gives us 3,159 results but if I were to do that search as mouse ADJ3 model, then I get the exact same number and I know that I'm getting these in either direction. So this is just a trick that I want to share with you for how, if there's a reason why you really wanna keep the words in the same direction, you can do that. Um, so you can also, if you want to, you can combine using phrase searching and proximity searching. So for instance, if we were thinking about cocoa butter substitutes, we may want to have cocoa butter as a phrase because that's quite a definite phrase but substitutes doesn't need to be attached to it as the phrase, because you can think about it. It might be that you get good results about um, substitutes for cocoa butter instead of cocoa butter substitutes um, and things like that. So if we were to try that one, again, I'm gonna stay here in advanced search, cocoa butter. And I'm remembering that I don't need to use quotation marks around that. And 
I can see substitutes. I'm going to truncate substitu substitutes. So it's substitute or substitutes of uh, one truncation. That symbol that you can use in Ovid is the dollar sign. So I'm gonna use that one. So this is actually gonna get us the phrase So I'm going to take out my mouse searches, actually. And so cocoa butter substitute truncated got me 399 results. And then if I do a search of cocoa butter adjacent five substitutes. Truncate. Done. We get a slightly higher number. And this is a way that you can decide whether or not you want to have your words together as a whole phrase or not. So um, what I'm going to do now is look at the difference between having the slight gap between cocoa butter and substitute and having it together as a single phrase. And I'm gonna do this by using not. So I've got my two searches here, and I'm going to say that I want to look at the ones where they are a maximum of five uh, words apart, but not the ones where there's a phrase. So I'll do two, not one. And I get 65 results with that. And if I open them up, then I can start to see what kind of results I'm getting and start to make a judgment about whether that's going to be the search that I want to use or not. Um, so do I want to have a little bit more leeway between my concepts or do I need them to be a phrase? Here we have cocoa butter or its substitutes. It's nicely highlighted for us. I'm not gonna go through all the results, but you can see, so here we have cocoa butter, but then substitute fats. And this is where you have to start bringing in your own judgment, knowledge of your topic about what's relevant for you. So here we have the, the version where it's a substitute for cocoa butter and it's a particular kind of oil. So this may well be really useful for us. Maybe we don't need to go all the way to adjacent five. Maybe we only needed to go to adjacent four uh, to pull in the, the flip of cocoa butter substitutes and have substitutes for cocoa butter. But that's something that we would determine by looking at the results a little bit more. One error that novice searchers make a lot is thinking that something should be a phrase that's not actually a phrase. So I'm gonna go back here to my, to my slideshow again and just think about different, like there's, there's, it's a really common error that I've seen in the classroom where a student will say, it should be meat quality, that's my phrase. And sometimes it's very easy to think, well, can I flip it as quality of meat? And if you can do that and it means the same thing, then obviously it doesn't need to be a phrase. There are some phrases that really are phrases. So, but you can always do a check of whether or not something is a phrase by doing a not search using some of these, one of these on the spectrum. So, there's times when using an and search is actually the most appropriate option. And it can be an and search in an entire record. So the words can be in the title or the abstract. So one word may be in the title and one in the abstract. 
Um, or you can always control an answer, an answer by keeping them in the same field. But it might be that you want to pull the words pretty close together with an, a proximity search. So say that they have to be within five or six words, or maybe just four words or three words, depending on the words that you're dealing with. And then there are times when phrases are true phrases. So like shelf life, both words together mean shelf life. And we can actually check and see what are the things that we get if we don't keep them together as a word and what are they, are they capturing our concept or not? So these are the ways that we can think we can do these searches to, to test them. So run the phrase search first as either in a single field or my favorite is to use the advanced search, the MP. So the MP, the multiple um, fields in FSTA are the title abstract and heading words. Next, break the phrase into an and search so that the two search terms will appear somewhere in the record, but not necessarily together. And then say, I'll look at the and search while weeding out all of the phrase searches. So I'll see what I'm getting when I don't have the phrase there. And that's when you scan the results and make a decision whether or not the phrase is actually appropriate for your purposes. You can do the same sort of thing, not with an and search, which is quite broad, but with a close adjacent search as well. So you could do the phrase search and then do the adjacency search and then weed out the phrase search from the adjacency search and look and see which is more appropriate for capturing your concept. And it's the kind of thing that with practice, and especially if you're using the same terminology for a lot of your searches, then you, you get to know your search terms. But if it's a new area and you're not sure, it's really quite easy to check to see what you're getting. And as I said earlier, with the number, you can go to 99. So that's very far away. But there's a certain point, I think, where you might as well be using an and in the specific field rather than kind of arbitrarily designating 25 words apart or something. So, and again, the main way that you figure out where it's the sweet spot for your particular words is to do some experimentation. That feels like a very quick overview of how you do this but I'd love to take any questions if there are any. It does look like we have received one quick question, oh, which okay. is, um, can you repeat the difference between the uh, dollar sign and the asterisk? Yes, you can often use either one, whichever one you prefer in Ovid um, for FSTA. So they both truncate. They both truncate a word. So this time I'm going to go to multi-field search just to show you that this is where I could decide to only search in the abstract. This is alphabetical, so I have to go to the top. So if I were to do a search with biodegradable, I have to spell it correctly, biodegradable. Um, so I'm thinking of biodegradable film and, but I want to do, make it a little bit more flexible. So I can do, uh, um, the dollar sign, or I could do the truncation mark. Um, so if I do this as adjacent, um, five film, so, and then I'm going to do this as film or films, um, or filming, I, I suppose it could be, then I get 854 results. If I do the same search again, and I substitute the dollar sign, I get just the same results. And so, I don't, I don't know the history of it in Ovid, but 
I do feel like people are using the um, asterisk in more and more and more search interfaces. So it may be that originally they use the dollar sign and they're transitioning to the asterisks as well. But I found myself that when I'm searching in the search fields that I need to use the dollar sign and not the asterisk. So I don't know why that is, but it's just something that I've discovered with my own searches. So are there any other questions? Thanks, Carol. We haven't received any other questions. Okay, thank you so much everybody for coming and thank you, Hannah.